Hi there, this is Matt from Planorama again. Um, last time we, I did a video about using GPT-4 to generate an ALU using uh, Verilog from a specification. So I thought this time we'd explore a little bit more and take a look at what happens uh, if we use something like GitHub Copilot. So what I did was I started here. Uh, you can see uh, I generated a, uh, an ALU, and this was back from GPT-4. Now this is a different iteration of it. Uh, I realized the last time that I created it, I didn't. I was including a carryout, which I didn't really want to use in the ALU. I, I wasn't thinking straight, so I decided, okay, what we need is a status register output, uh, so we can have a carry flag. So I was like, all right, let's do that. Uh, and so we generated the the code here, which is great. And uh, I pulled it over into um, Visual Studio uh, uh, Editor here, so we can look at it here. I do want to make a note of something that I think is is really worth mentioning, and I didn't talk about it in the last video. You know, beyond what I wrote here and what I wrote here, that is it. Like it, it took this information that I wrote and defined um, the ALU. I think what's interesting is to say that it, you know, it, it figured out that, I mean, you know, you could say it inferred, but I wrote and or, you know, exclusive or, inverter, add, subtract. It just figured out that that was what we needed. Uh, and those were the functions uh, that, you know, it, it knew that add was for addition and it knew that exclusive or was for um, exclusive or. I didn't have to tell it how those uh, you know, I didn't have to draw any diagrams or, or uh, make any truth tables to show how those worked. It just knew, right? Which I think was, you know, I overlooked it, but it is worth mentioning that it, it, it was able to understand what I meant there and certainly resolved uh, to, those, uh, to those correct operations, those correct uh, Boolean and arithmetic operations. So bringing it over here into Visual Studio Code, um, I just copied and pasted it over, uh, but here I have GitHub Copilot enabled. So we're going to try some things and see see how it does. So again, uh, we have A and B as the input. We have a three bit opcode, uh, and uh, it will just use a, it uses a case statement here uh, in the behavioral Verilog to to figure out what to do with the uh, with the output uh, based on the input, and uh, and then also has a default. Uh, case so if nothing's happening uh, in the uh, um, in the ALU. Basically, if there's a, a wrong opcode, the outputs will always be the output will always be zero. The result will always be zero. So that's that's fine. Uh, so let's try let's try doing something here. Um, why don't we add in a multiply instruction? All right. Now uh, we didn't uh, do that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding it in. So here's Watch what happens. I'm going to do three. Oh, it's, it's already predicting I'm going to do a shift left. That's that's funny. I didn't, you know, we, we could do that too, but I didn't say a thing about about that because you can see what is great. What is great here is what uh, GitHub Copilot is inserting. It thinks I'm going to add a shift left, but actually we're going to add in a multiply. So we're going to do a three bit. Let's just use the next stop code. So one one zero. And we're going to say begin, and we're going to say this is mult. Oh, look at that. And do you see what happened, right? Let me just go back, multiply. It graded, what is gray is what uh, was generated by uh, Copilot. So I didn't, again, have to type anything other than MU, and it figured out, oh, he wants to do a multiply operation, right? And so what did it do? It created the, the A times B for uh, arithmetic multiplication. And if the, uh, if the output is greater than 255, carry is one. Now, the other thing we might wanna um, implement is an overflow flag. So let's do this. We're gonna do an output. Okay, now look, at the, now look what it's doing already. It's saying reg zero, zero flag. So we wanna know if there, it wants to um, insert the zero flag, which also is a common flag in ALUs, right? So it already is kind of anticipating where where this is going. This is this is quite interesting. But we're going to do an output reg, and we're going to do overflow. And it already figured out that's an overflow flag. So at this point, 
let's figure out where we're going to put in the overflow logic. So here we've we've done the carry logic for the add and subtract for the multiply. Let's see if we just type in handle overflow flag. Ah, okay. So it's saying if uh, if either of those conditions, if A is greater than uh, basically zero FF and uh, or zero one one and okay, then overflow is one. Else, okay. So I think that logic is correct. I'm not. I have to or correct. I have to have to go back and review it. But I think that is correct. So I can put that in there. And now again, it's inserting Verilog for me. And I think that's really interesting that uh, Visual Studio is able to to go and do that. Now, uh, we also, let's just do for the hell of it, let's do the zero flag. So we're gonna have an output for the regs for the zero flag. Now let's figure out when that's going to get set. Uh, let me see here. How are we gonna do that? So on the result, actually, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's just give it a, a uh, let me let me try handles. See, look at that. It already knows that I'm going to need to handle the zero flag. So again, it's graying it out right there. I don't have to type a thing other than say handle hit tab and let it go do the do it. And so here we are. We're looking at the result. We're always looking at the result, and we're saying, okay, if it's zero, then the zero flag is one. Otherwise, it's zero. So what we're seeing here is that uh, Copilot is doing a pretty pretty good job. Uh, trying to guess what needs to be done and insert that uh, insert that code, that RTL, uh, into, into the file here. So uh, now all we're doing right now, so we added multiplication. Now granted, I, I didn't change the, the, the output register to be, because uh, right now everything's 8-bit. So I didn't change the output register to 16-bit, which is what you would probably do for multiplication. Uh, let's not worry about that right now. Uh, let's let's just uh, uh, go with what we have. Now, we have an ALU.v. What if we were to go and do a test bench file? All right now, one of the the really nice things about uh, GitHub Copilot is that it it knows about all the different files that are in your um, hierarchy. And so, because we're working in Visual Studio, um, and it sees the directory that I'm working in. If we go and create another file, and let's just call it ALU test bench.v, created a brand new file. All right. Now how can we start it off? Let's let's do this now. Let's see, let's see what how how far we can go <laughs> to have it generate a test bench for me. So uh, this is going to be test bench to test <laughs> the ALU. It already <laughs> inserted it in. Now I'm going to hit enter, and it's starting to create the module for me. Well, I don't want to have that commented. Let's see what it does. Okay, now this is interesting. It's giving me different inputs into the test bench. It's an interesting way to do it. I'm going to kind of figure out what it's doing here. Instantiate the ALU. Okay, now you see it's using the ALU that I just uh, created in the other file. It's referencing that. And uh, there we are, hit tab to bring that up. The clock, oh, it's gonna create a clock too, interesting. We don't have a clock, oh, okay, now it's creating a clock. We don't really need to have a clock there to do this, but I'm just going to see how it's thinking about generating the test bench. So I'm just kind of letting it go here and we'll see what it does. So test cases. And I bet you now it's going to generate a whole lot of things, which is why we're waiting. Let's hold on a moment. I had this happen, uh, yeah, sometime before and uh, I waited and I thought, oh, is it doing anything? And it really is, it's just taken a while to generate it. So look at the test cases it just generated. So it's doing initial begin, it's testing the and. Let's just hit tab here and look. 
testing the the and for the zero case okay making a test case for oh I see so it's breaking down okay so the and has these tests all right and or has those tests exclusive or so what are we testing we're testing the zero zero the zero one the one zero and the one one okay and in the or case we're doing the same thing so it decided to to do it do the testing in that way the exclusive or same thing inversion the same thing and what else uh, we're gonna test more let's see um, for the inverter so let's say let's just do add and see if it'll go and start doing the, the test cases for the addition. All right, now I'm having the hit tab every time. Okay, so now it's just continuing to go forward. Oops. Yeah, so it's doing all those cases. Now, what's interesting, though, is that, that that's not all the unique cases because we're doing all ones right and there are other unique scenarios like looking at a single carry uh, you may want to create some other input combinations okay so it's going to go through and do the subtract too so interesting so now we're going to let's just say i'm going to end the module here oh it's going to do a whoops do a finish end Okay, so what do we do? We have the ALU test bench. We have the ALU instantiated. Um, and, and then we have an initial begin end uh, for, for looking at how this is, uh, the tests are going to run. Now, here's something interesting. Let's put in, just for the hell of it, we've got the... Um, the inputs, and we've got the op, of course, the, the numerical inputs. Uh, we have the opcode. Let's just see expected result equals there. So it didn't list it, it didn't put it in, but it knows that the expected result is going to be all zeros with the carry out overflow and zero equal to one. And let's come over here and do the same thing. And it might even recognize the pattern. So I may go here and say E, <laughs> yeah, E, and I hit tab, expected result, no carry, output, it's okay. So let's come down here and do the same thing. With this one, we should have a different, uh, different zero and a different carry as well. So let's go here and hit E for expected result. Now the zero flag is not set. The carry... Uh, is zero. It's interesting. It's using overflow. Okay. We don't. Oh, did we have an overflow? Oh, we did have the overflow flag. That's right. I put it in there before. What was I thinking? So uh, it's giving the output. Now, in this case, uh, we're not going to have a carry. We're not going to have an overflow. And the zero is not set. Perfect. Now, let's go down to the addition. Let's make sure that it's going to do that. It's kind of thinking through that correctly. So we're going to do expected result so the expected result here zero flag is one great let's go and do this one in particular expected result okay so we're going to have a carry um, and all right so this is really interesting i i, I hope this has been uh, you know kind of fruitful for you to see how we're using AI in a different way. Uh, we used it before to kind of get started to create our base ALU, um, and then we're expanding upon it. Now, I, I could have, and I've done this before, uh, write um, and, and actually ask GPT to generate the test bench for me. But I thought, well, let's go over and do that in Copilot and see what it can do. And we can see that it's writing, you know, it's, it's using an initial block and, and creating a, a test bench file for the ALU that exists in a different file, right? Uh, very interesting that it's able to do that. Um, one more thing we'll do, and we're going to jump over to the ALU. I'm kind of curious to see um, 
what kind of assertions, uh, system Verilog assertions, we can generate here through uh, GitHub Copilot. So let's try here. I'm going to do something to start typing. I'm just going to say, uh, let's do SVAs for this, for, yeah, for testing. Sure. Let's see what it generates for me. Might take a second here. Now I said SVAs. I didn't say system Verilog assertions. No, it's not generating. So that's not really what we need. We're not looking for, for that kind of thing. Let's say uh, system Verilog assertions for this module. Actually, no, let's do it for the for the zero flag. That's a good idea for the zero flag. Okay, so it is doing an assert property. The thing uh, that it's missing or it's messing up on is that if I hit tab here, we'll see there is no pause edge clock here. We don't have a clock coming in as far as I recall, right? No, there's no clock. This is all combinational. So it's not going to work uh, quite quite right um, having a pause edge clock here. This would be better to put uh, probably in the test bench file uh, if we wanted to do it that way. But um, uh, maybe there's a, let's try a different approach here. For zero, let's use system Verilog assertions for formal verification of the, let's see if it knows what to do there. And overflow flag, all right. Sure. Assertion <laughs> note. Assertion. It's even putting in the comments. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, okay. So let's just do prop. Okay. Here we are. Zert property zero equals one. Else error. Zero flag is not set. Well, that's not really an assertion. I would need right here. I want to basically make sure that the assertion that the zero flag is being set at the proper time and just saying that the zero flag, that this doesn't make sense. So look, there's work to be done. You can't necessarily trust everything that AI gives you, but uh, I think we're all going to learn that <laughs> quite a bit more in the future. So um, that was really it. I appreciate uh, your time. I'm curious if you have any comments, let me know. Uh, about this, but I, I hope this walkthrough was helpful for you and, and kind of show you how you can use GPT-4 and um, and uh, GitHub Copilot uh, kind of in unison, and, uh, and, and maybe that will help accelerate your work. So thanks a lot, and have a good day. Take care.